What's going on guys? Victor here. Still in Alaska. We got Brookie right there. We are on the Kenai River with Captain Ryan Hughes of Hughes Fishing LLC. And his specialty is salmon and rainbow trout, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. This is a little bit different than what we've been doing in Alaska. We've been going offshore, but we actually came inshore on this beautiful river right here. So we got about a 15 minute run from the boat ramp. Catch you guys there. So we're sitting at about 14 miles from the ocean. Uh, some of these reds and kings and silvers, they're gonna travel over 100 miles up this watershed Ooh. to where they spawn. They'll come back and they'll spawn in the same spot that they were born in. Uh, same creek, whatnot. So yeah, all by smell. Kind of like our sea turtles in Florida where they go back to the same place that they hatched and then they lay their eggs there, which is insane to me too. The water is really moving. So the salmon are coming this direction? Correct, they're coming from the ocean, which we're getting a lot closer to. This is super tidally influenced right here. We're up and down 10 vertical feet of water. Oh, wow. um, and oh, they're really? headed, yep. Really? So we're, we're in the tidal influence zone. So on this bank right here, you can see right at the grass levels where high tide is, and then low tide will be even lower than where we're at right now. Yeah, so all these fish are swimming. They're going this way face is going this way we'll have our gear right off the back of the boat they're gonna swim right into it send it about 60 and we're on the rock never fished one of these before have no we? very cool let's see if i can get it right on the dot on 60 just look at the gas pump 60 baby at this point in the river are the fish still actively feeding no so once basically all salmon pretty much once they hit fresh water they're done um, and they're starting to deteriorate as they move upstream so what are they <coughs> why are they eating these things we're going off of agitation okay. so these lures i can hold this thing in the current these lures are in the current you know sitting there flashing darting back and forth and they are basically just pissing them off pissing them off we use a lot of scent we're using sardines today wrapped on the belly of the lures helps you know with with getting bites and also helps cover up human scent you'll see me most of the time you know this isn't for me to get not get stink on me this is uh for me to kind of help protect those lures on getting hum, human scent put on them i mean like i said these things smell parts per billion and they're gonna smell human scent on them no matter what one of the coolest things we get to do with our job is we meet so many captains and the knowledge some of these guys have is incredible so you guys give ryan a like right now do it for him because seems like this guy really knows what he's doing and he, you spent your whole life on these fish right on the river since first grade uh between kindergarten and first grade and been out here pretty much ever since every summer all right guys we got a salmon on brian just he's swimming up yeah he's right here he's right here ryan just pulled up the anchor and you have a lot better shot of landing this fish, you said, like this. Oh! Red salmon. Red? Perfect. Wow. That was quick, huh? <laughs> that fish just swam up, up towards us. These fish are used, look at that. The hook came off just like that. These fish are used to swimming up current. So for him, naturally, he wants to keep going up current. I guess he didn't really feel the tension and, and swam away from us. Berkey lost a fish earlier that was going that way. All right, so this is a red salmon. This is a female. We can tell by the nose. Uh, different age between a male and a female. Male will have more of a hook nose. Um, this is one we call blushed up. They'll cut nice red meat, be beautiful. Um, difference between this and a silver. This one on the tail, no spots on the tail and uh, no coloring 
the silvers will have a little dark colored tail and have bright silver streaks across the tail. So, yeah. so far on our Alaska trip, I've caught a little baby pink salmon, my first ever red salmon, and we're still in the running for the silver or coho salmon. And I'm very excited to see the difference, not only in the color, but the taste of these guys, because we're gonna be bringing home some silver salmon and now some red salmon. Well, we're switching spots. We got one red. I think we pulled hook on a silver, but we're gonna go and give another spot on the river a try. Switch spots and we're hooked up. Come on, baby. This fish is charging the boat right now. There he is. And all I'm trying to do is just keep his head in the current so he doesn't shake that hook. Ready? Yep. Go ahead and lift, lift, lift. Got him. Nice. That's there silver? Is. That is a silver. Oh yeah, baby. Bright chrome silver. Great fish. Gorgeous. These are the lures we're using. Crazy looking spoon things. And Ryan's got them in all different colors. It's just so crazy to see how things change as you go from region to region. We got like a little octopus style hook on there. And just caught a silver, so we set this out, and these reels have line counters on them. So we set it to whatever Ryan tells us to set it to. So the Kenai is, this is all fed by glaciers. So we got glaciers way up there melting in the mountains. The water flows here and goes into Cook's Inlet. The salmon are in the ocean. They're gonna swim upriver to spawn out. Beautiful silver salmon, also known as a coho. The most exciting part about this fish is eating it. You know, we don't get fresh salmon in Florida, but we're coming home with a bunch of fresh fish from this trip. And one of the most exciting things is the silvers we get to take home. And it's crazy to see, we don't really have any fish in Florida that kind of have this mouth. The only thing I could think of is a glass nose we catch off the beach, but look at his little nose. I mean, it's just, very different morphology from what we're used to. These fish are a lot softer flesh too. Different tails, just everything about them is just completely different. So when this guy goes to spawn, you guys see the salmon, when they denature, they get those humps and they get those almost beak-like mouths and they use that beak to latch onto each other to spawn. Hooked up, hooked up! Did it rip? I think it came off. Oh no, it's still there. It's on, I can see it up there. Back there. Sorry. Yeah, right. He's it's at the boat. River salmon for you. Silver salmon? Look at that baby. Salmon. Silver salmon. Here we go. Coming salmon. Salmon. And as you guys see, it's raining, so I do apologize for the lens, but you know, we've had three really good days of weather. This is the first slightly rainy day here in Alaska. Our second silver salmon of the day. Gorgeous fish, and you guys see that this one. Rick, you see his beak already developing a little bit more? Yep. Yep. My first river salmon, silver salmon, beautiful fish. Check him out. So this male, you guys see that his mouth is kind of curved. He's going to latch onto a female and it's going to help him to spawn. And it's crazy. This will get more and more hook like shaped, but gorgeous fish out here on the Kenai River. Go right through there. Mike is playing. I see that delicious orange meat unfolding. Gorgeous. 
Hold on. You guys got to take a second to appreciate this. There's, you, you have seen so many fish on this channel, but salmon are so unique in their color of their meat and the oily and oiliness and the richness of their meat. Look at this. I mean, there's no other fish like it in the world. Great fillet job by Ryan and very excited to eat this guy up. That is with no rib bones. Rib bones stay attached here. And that filet looks pretty. Looks kind of like a butterfly. Oh, oh fish oh, on, oh, fish oh. on. Nice. As we're filleting a fish. I'm gonna slide this yes. right Come baby, come. Side. It's charging this. Oh, oh, come off. Yep, yep, dang it. We're winding down the end of the day and Ryan was just showing us a beautiful fillet job on a salmon and this rod got hit. We just lost one, but some gorgeous meat right there. And what he did was a butterfly cut. So one of the most coveted parts of the salmon is the belly. That's where the fat is held. And um, apparently bears, when they're after salmon, that's the part they really want to eat. That's where all the flavor is. So he had, he made it to where the belly you guys see the both fillets are attached by the belly. So where I fish, it's heavily glaciated water. So we can't fish visually like this where we're relying on a lure for the fish to hit it. We have to rely on bait. So we save the eggs and we put a commercial cure on them. It's a sodium based cure and it gives it color, scent, and it helps hold the eggs together because we just put it on a single hook. And so I save this and use this for bait. Works great. Nice. Yeah, big difference in the red versus the uh, silver in terms of the belly meat. Yeah, and even this one's starting to blush up. This meat will eat fine. It'll cut it cut totally fine. But when they're brighter chrome, they're even a redder, darker, redder color meat than what they are here. Little, little different color. Not much, really. Not much at all, actually. But no. these should be, these are normally a little bit more redder, but this meat's totally fine. So silver, coho on the right, Yep. red, sockeye on the left. Yep. If we don't catch anything else, I gotta give a big thank you to Ryan for taking us out. And if you guys are interested in booking a trip with him, if you guys are in the Sol Dotton area, give him a look up. I'm gonna have all of his information linked below. Great dude, we had a ton of fun. It's kind of late in the season for doing what we wanted to do and the afternoons have been a little slower. But we took that gamble. That's, you know, that's not on him, but he limited out this morning and he's pretty much limited out every single day. And we got some fresh salmon to take home to Florida. So Heck we yeah. are very happy. And we got to do something completely different. One, one of my favorite things about like traveling and doing different things like this is just experiencing all these different fisheries and how different people just catch fish with all these different unique ways. And just like everything is so different. So it's really, really cool. Yes. So. Thank you, brother. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you. Had a great time. Come again. You guys ready for the fastest catching cook ever? We're gonna knock this out in less than 10 minutes. Look at this beautiful salmon. What a cool fishery. I can't wait to go back and do it again. You know, it was kind of a slow day on the river for us, but Ryan said this was the first day that he didn't limit out. But you know what? You don't gotta limit out every time. We got fresh salmon for dinner, so that's all that matters. We're gonna hit it with some pepper. You know how a lot of people say that let fish speak for itself, don't over season it? Well, salmon is certainly one of those fish because salmon's got a lot of flavor on its own. It's a very fatty fish, which you don't find a lot of in warm water fish. So cold water fish tend to have more fat. Same thing with animals. You gotta think they use it as insulation for the cold, right? 
So I didn't tell you guys what this was, but this is coriander. And we're gonna do a little bit of salt as well. about seasoning. People, okay, my definition of over seasoning and overpowering might be different than yours. To me, seasoning one side heavy is not a lot. Half of the seasoning is gonna fall off in the pan and you get a good crust on there. There's no sauce, I'm not cooking it in a broth. I'm gonna be able to taste the salmon, so. Everyone's got their own version of seasoning. I think most people under season things. They put like three little granules of salt. That's not enough, man. Don't be afraid to season your fish. We're gonna go in with some olive oil. Seasoned side down with the salmon. And look at that, I actually left the bloodline in because this salmon was so fresh and so delicious. The last time we had it, but I decided to leave it on. So I removed all of those. Okay. Rick and I are gonna have a a light dinner. Salmon's kind of a heavy fish and we had a halibut chowder last night so we kind of wanted something light. In here, this is our dressing. Ginger, freshly grated ginger, cilantro, palm sugar, that's that stuff right there. Palm sugar, to me, tastes like a solid honey. Picture honey in like a crystal form, that's what it tastes like, it's delicious. I'm gonna add some rice vinegar to our Salad dressing, some sesame oil, as well as some olive oil, some pepper, and the smallest amount of mustard just to emulsify it. Okay, now we mix. Mm -hmm. You smell that? Sesame oil, ginger, cilantro, all very fragrant things. I think you guys have noticed by, by now my style of cooking. I love very fragrant things. Arugula, like I always tell you guys, like Brooke, for example, she does not like arugula on its own. Tossed in a salad, it's delicious. It's got a lot more flavor than romaine or iceberg. Watch this. I should probably taste this first, shouldn't I? Yeah, baby. Okay. Eh, why not? Put the whole thing in there, huh? Mix it with your hands delicately. Arugula is a leafy vegetable that can uh, be pretty fragile. So I just like to toss it at the very end. Okay, we're gonna go down with our arugula. And yes, I'm using my hands because it is just me and my lady tonight. My lady. My lady. My young, beautiful, smoking lady who's be gonna be going to Mexico with me tomorrow. This is called the leaving town salad. You go and you try to get anything that's going to go bad and put it in your salad. So we got some bean sprouts. You know what, let's go down with some tomatoes first. Bean sprouts. Bean sprouts add a very cool texture to your salad. Crunchy but soft at the same time. Rick does not like radishes, but your boy Vic loves him some radishes. I'll eat him like an apple. Brooke can attest to that, ain't that right, babe? Yes. Okay, some shaved carrot. Glazed pecans, 10 million bajillion calories in these things, but they are so delicious and it's gonna add a real nice crunch to our salad. I have not flipped the fish at all. And you'll see why in one second. Check this out. Ready? Look at that crust. Look at that crust. Now, Brookie, which piece would you like? You get first shot. Mm, that one. Okay. This one, the non radish salad. All right, I'm going to take the big boy right here. And you know what? I'm gonna actually take these off the nonstick because I don't want them to cook anymore. And there you have it. That's a very simple, easy salad you guys can make at home. And you don't have to do it with salmon. This is all things that we actually had laying around at the house. And I'm very excited. Let's eat.
How fitting, Corona is before Mexico, huh? Cheers to you guys at home. Mm. Cheers to Ryan. Wish you could join us, but we are thousands of miles away. So let's see what we got. Oh yeah, baby, look at that steam coming off there. Wow, that crust? Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. I made the salmon very similarly the other day, and I guess it was because of the coriander. Really gives it a good taste. Mm-hmm. I 100% have never really been a big salmon fan. I like it in sushi rolls because I feel like you can't really taste it that much. But just like normal salmon, I just don't really care for that taste. But when we had it, we had it fresh on the grill in Alaska and it was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I was like really excited to bring it home and eat it. And the other night I cooked it and I loved it. And then this is really great again. Yeah. I, it's just, I've never had good, fresh, maybe wild caught salmon. Yeah, absolutely. Wild caught, fresh, properly taken care of. Kenai River salmon is good stuff right here. I'm a freaking salmon lover now. You are, you're a salmon sister. Look at me. Salmon sister. <laughs> Look at that, that's my favorite part. That bloodline, on a salmon. Haven't even tried your dressing room. Right hmm. Not only are we engaged, but we get to live out our dreams together and work together, which is pretty amazing to be one day husband wife team tackling the world for YouTube. So it's pretty unbelievable. <laughs> it is. And it's a dream come true all Literally. because of you guys, because you guys are watching this right now, watching us eat our salmon. That's the only reason we're able to do this. So thank you so much. Next stop, Mexico. We'll see you there.